I'm Jagannath. Uh, I'm going to deal anthropology for you. So in this context, uh, before uh, getting into the subject, uh, before opting, we need to know what anthropology is. And we need to know the scope of the subject. We need to know the meaning, what the subject is and uh, the scope very clearly and the different dimensions of the subject. By this time, you might have accumulated, gone through the subject. You might have got a certain understanding what anthropology is. But whether the way you have understood about the subject, whether it is uh, uh, you have understood in a right way or not, uh, you will be able to uh, get clear after the discussion being made with you in this demo. So I am going to introduce you today what anthropology is. Uh, <clears throat> apart from knowing what anthropology is, why you must select anthropology is a question. One of the reasons is uh, uh, anthropology is a discipline which transforms you. It, it broadens your perception. In the sense, you will be able to know about yourself well. Uh, what are you actually? Uh, <clears throat> and you will be able to understand what you are actually. You will be able to understand what society is. So, in this process, you will be able to, when you are able to understand what society is clearly, and you will be able to know the dimensions of the society well. Why these days people are selecting anthropology more? Why deliberately, because of any different reasons, in UPSC people uh, opting anthropology are being selected? One of the reasons is scoring, no doubt about that. The other reason for selecting people because it transforms you into an administrator. The reason behind it is you are going to deal with the society in future after being selected, yes or no? Yes or no? What for you are being selected? What is the purpose behind you are being selected by this constitutional body known as UPSC? Is it to fulfill your whims and fancies? Just try to answer my question. My question is why they must select you? What is UPSC expecting from you? UPSC is expecting a troubleshooting capacity in you to solve the problems in the society. Yes or no? Yes. That is the main purpose. Anthropology makes you to acquire a skill set to know the cause of the problem and to strike at the grassroot level to solve the problem permanently in the society. You will be having a clear-cut understanding of society, what it is actually and the dynamics of society. Because anthropology studies humanity. What it studies? Humanity. humanity. So in this process, the word anthropology is being derived from a Greek word. From Greek language, the word anthropology is being derived. So anthropos means uh, man, logy means study or science. So the science of human race, anthropology means. So from the Greek word anthropos means human being, logos means science of study. The, that is the basic meaning of the word anthropology. So, in this process, <coughs> why you will be able to get the skill set or maturity level to solve the problems in the society when you have read this discipline known as anthropology? What is it actually? What does it contain? After knowing the meaning scope, 
you must be able to understand the different dimensions of the subject being given to you so in this context <coughs> we need to know what anthropology fundamentally consists of <clears throat> anthropology fundamentally consists of majorly certain branches majorly it contains certain branches So what are those branches, the fundamental branches of anthropology and what they study about? As we have come to know that it studies humanity. So it studies you. What are you actually? You have got mainly two dimensions. What are those two dimensions you have got majorly? The two dimensions you have got are, which is very unique to human beings. One is the physic. You are made up of certain material. You, that material, you have got a physical form. So that branch of anthropology is known as physical anthropology. What is it known as? Physical anthropology. So one of the major branch, because it is study of humanity or human being, you, when you, what are you actually, you are a being made up of certain material you have got certain physic so that particular part of anthropology is known as physical physical anthropology so because it studies you uh, <coughs> studies about you about the physical in this context later because of uh, the reason because the discipline of anthropology is much more broader the name physical anthropology has been replaced by a word known as new physical anthropology later further because of its further complexity and have broadness having a larger scope studying about humanity it has been uh, now it is known as biological anthropology physical anthropology or biological anthropology is one and the same physical anthropology or biological anthropology means one and the same but the word biological anthropology gives you a broader understanding because anthropology will, no, will not just study about your physics. Anthropology studies evolution of humanity. How you have been evolved. So you have not been created as it is. We or life in general is the resultant of evolution. So what do you mean by evolution in this context? Change is one of the aspects of evolution. Evolution is not just change. Evolution is change with adaptation. Where there is a transformation of uh, organisms from simple to complex. Organisms gradually transform from simple to complex. This phenomenon of transformation of uh, organisms from simple to complex happens over millions of years. It doesn't happen overnight. So evolution is a process over a period of time. This time is millions of years. In this process, you are becoming from a simple organism to complex organism. So, for example, we have been evolved from a monkey. It has been established through archaeological evidences etc genetical evidences <coughs> embryological evidences anatomical evidences 
have established that uh, we are the resultant of evolution what are the i will be explaining you in in the class what are the em embryological evidences you have got what are the anatomical evidences you have got what are the archaeological evidences you have got the archaeology studies the different layers of the earth's interior in this process of excavation the sequence in the stratigraphy of different strata the gradual change in the anatomical variation the change in the level of the strata reveals you that these organisms have been gradually evolved changed over a period of time so in this case uh, anthropology studies the evolution of human human being from simple to complex over a period of time in this process it every organism not only human being are subjected to competition are subjected to competition each and every adopted organism is not able to survive because the best adopted character is been selected by nature apart from this adaptive capability you have gone which is an inborn there are certain external factors selecting this adaptation so there are many other factors responsible for the final establishment of a species subjecting to competition capability of adaptation being selected by nature apart from this you have got the mutating capability mutation is sudden changes in the genome when there are certain sudden changes in the genome the physic changes because the genes inside you is a molecular script of life which will be manifested as a physical character outwards when there is a change in the genome the physical character changes the change can be because of different mutagens the agents which are responsible for mutations are known as mutagens the mutagen can be a chemical a mutagen can be a radiation uh, a region you might be drinking water somewhere else an animal the rock might be containing more amount of radioactive material or a region might be having high intense exposure of some uv radiation or and different reasons and nature is so complex these are some of the reasons we are able to come to no but nature might have been have got many dimensions responsible for evolution so it over a period of time it has led to a conversion of simple organisms to complex organisms so in this context of uh, human evolution we are not con we are not considered about the evolution of uh, all the sp species of plants and animals we are concerned about the evolution of primates most uh, concentrating most on uh, human evolution primates consist consists of uh, many other animals like uh, great apes like uh, chimps uh, gorillas orangutans monkeys lemurs prosimians means animals before means before simians means monkeys animals before monkeys you might have heard about lemurs have you ever heard of this so these are i will be showing to you anyhow uh, so uh, <coughs> lemurs or so we will be studying about these uh, prosimians so simians means monkeys uh, and uh, great apes so lesser apes human evolution these are the aspects which we are concerned about in terms of evolution so now you have come to know what evolution is evolution this is a very important point to understand evolution is not only physical evolution is also socio cultural evolution is not only physical evolution is also socio cultural for example a cultural factor like technology technology is a cultural factor so you have not only evolved from simple to complex organism apart from this physic you have got you have got something else uh, known as culture so you have got a culture so you are a being with a cultural practice 
a unique thing because of the evolution is because of the combination of factors of uh, physical and cultural aspects so you are you are able to establish not only because of the physical evolution you are able to establish also because of cultural evolution so then what what is meant by culture what is meant by cultural evolution we need to know so culture is <coughs> of two types material culture and non material culture material culture you can feel it so for example the shirt i am wearing is part of material culture where i can feel this any kind of material might be the chair or the pen or the automobile or the aeroplane or what the food or what not you can physically feel consist consist consists of material culture non material culture in the society consists of value systems norms cultural practices festivals religion all these aspects uh, so the values and norms can you feel them it is a kind of idea and a way of thinking right so these are non material aspects of culture where value systems norms are not static they are dynamic value systems and norms of culture are not static they are dynamic means a norm will not be the same or will not be static always it will be changing over a period of time for example sati sahagamanam do you accept this now once upon a time it is accepted by society now it is crime means value systems norms ethics are not constant they gradually change for example living together without marriage once upon a time might not be accepted gradually these days what is happening even though larger section of the society is not accepting this rejecting this negating this but forceful there it is being made accepted there are people who are living together without marriage many pop ups happen happening in our uh, city uh, regarding colwin uh, apartments are been constructed separately for these people have you ever come across this there are in our city so is it not a change once upon a time this is not existing now this is existing so the cultural practices gradually and this is being declared by the supreme court as legal this is a judgment gain being given by supreme court that it is legal living together without marriage is is it not a change so evolution happens not only physically evolution happens socio culturally for example technology is part of culture the first kind of technology which you have innovated it is not you means homo sapiens means human beings the existing human beings have not innovated the first technology what is that first technology which we have our predecessors have innovated stone age it is not a homo sapiens it is a, a homo erectus or neanderthal or some other being uh, or homo habilis might have been innovated this uh, stone age technology is something using a tool which is not part of your body which makes the work is any tool which you are using which is not part of your body <clears throat> so gradually what happened did technology remain there at stone age gradually the process of evolution you have been transformed from stone age to metal age the first metal the metallurgical uh, in the smelting technology where man has innovated what is that uh, metal being used copper later bronze later iron so bronze is not a metal bronze is an alloy 
alloy of tin and copper copper is the major one uh, copper and tin together known as bronze so first copper bronze iron so previously you are because of this reason you are nomadic when you have innovative technology able to extract more amount of energy from environment so with the evolution of technology what happened you are able to cultivate land because you have got a iron plow you have mastered the technique of uh, controlling fire you have mastered the technique of controlling uh, uh, cattle so you, with the help of cattle and with the help of iron plow and with the help of fire you are able to cultivate larger area of land there is infinite amount of energy available in the nature but a technology is able to extract more amount of energy from environment imagine cultivating without mechanization like tractors plow and bull bulls for example you compare the extent of area you can cultivate with a couple of bulls and an iron plow and a tractor in which case do you cultivate more with the help of tractors so is it not technology responsible for increasing in the area of agriculture means more amount of food grains more amount of food grains means more amount of energy so technology is responsible for extraction of energy from the environment so <coughs> it studies uh, socio cultural aspects one of the cultural aspect is evolution of technology in this process it studies the evolution of society so in this case society is a group of people living together interacting with certain relationships which are formal and informal which are formal and informal for example you might be friends you may maintain this friendship or you may not maintain this friendship it is up to you <coughs> but when you have entered into this kind of institutional like educational institutions it is a formal relationship between you and me it is a teacher and a student relationship this has been defined with certain principles and we have to act only according to that rules and regulations but there are no such kind of rules and regulations in the case of informal relations so society is a group of people living together interacting together and each individual in a society is a part of an institution what is society made up of society is made up of many number of institutions <clears throat> so you are part of an institution you have got different social institutions like uh, family marriage kinship religion economic organizations so you are a part of a family many number of families together form society so an institution known as family is responsible the formation of society in the society some of them are part of political institution all of us are part of economic institution so political organization is an institution for example legislature is an institution executive is an institution economic organizations are institutions these are existing in the society all the institutions together form society <clears throat> an institution consists of a group of people where the aim of the members of the institution is the same for example you and me are the part of this institution is is both of us aim is not the same your aim is to crack civil services my aim is to guide you to achieve your goal both are the same take the case of uh, a political uh, institution like a legislature the main aim of legislature is to make laws whether it is the speaker or the chairman or the mp or the mla or the governor or the president may they are responsible for the formation of laws without being approved by the president or the governor or by the legislature or the speaker can a bill become a law no whoever it is in an institutional member occupying different positions <coughs> their aim is the same many number of such institutions 
combine together to form society but the structure of the institutions vary from society to society for example you have got a political system in your country that structure is known as parliamentary form of government a democratic system but the same democracy does the us have the same structure of polity you call it as presidential form the president there is the real executive in a presidential form is your president the real executive is yes, no who is the real executive in your political system the prime minister so there is a structural variation do you have prime minister in uh, presidential form no there is variation in the structure and authoritative levels in uh, a political system both are political institutions but there is variation in terms of structure and the way they function you have got a political system in uh, china a communist communistic pattern where you have got a single party system the structure there is completely different the socialistic pattern russian system is completely different but all of them are political institutions in anthropology we study not only the physical evolution of man from a monkey type of organism or from australopithecus or homo habilis homo erectus to homo sapiens <clears throat> a gradual change how it has happened gradual modifications in the same way we study about the variation of culture as initially you might have read in history as uh, as ancient history but actually that is part of archaeology stone age you might have read in uh, history right the, that is part of cultural initial stages of culture which is actually borrowed from a discipline known as archaeology so we study the evolution of human being not only in terms of physical aspects both in terms of physical and socio cultural aspect now in this context are you able to differentiate between culture and society so it is a group of people living together follow a culture culture is a behavioral pattern of people so the way we behave the cultural pattern in telangana and america and uganda is it one and the same the festivals celebrations ethics value systems vary from society to society so society is a group of people with certain institutional structure and the behavioral pattern of these society and institutions vary from society to society which is being based on value systems ethics and norms of that particular society and these values norms and ethics are vary from society to society that is the reason why the culture varies got my point so uh, now you have come to know that anthropology is the study of humanity in terms of evolution both physical and socio cultural anthropology is been described as holistic holistic means it is a science which studies about you in every dimension it studies you physically it studies you socio culturally and why it has been described holistic because it studies societies in comparison after doing this kind of evolutionary study of each and every society compares different societies throughout the world in this process you will be able to find in this process of comparison the similarities and differences so you will be able to know how far the societies are similar and different what are the uniqueness in all the societies what are the differences in different societies so that you will be able to understand what are you actually in a better manner so it is known as holistic because it not only studies all the societies it studies you your evolution physically and socio culturally and in this process it studies societies in temporal aspect so what do you mean by studying societies in temporal aspect studying indian society in the contemporary scenario and trying to compare the same society in the past gradually yes sir 
so this phenomenon of study of societies with the variation of time duration is known as temporal study so you are comparing the past societies with the contemporary condition so it studies societies temporally comparatively in an evolutionary manner are you able to understand me the way the subject studies you these are the different dimensions it studies uh, uh, humanity that is the reason why anthropology is considered to be holistic are you able to follow me what am i discussing with you so in this case the other so the physical anthropology or biological anthropology is one and the same so why they have changed this name from physical anthropology to biological anthropology because physic is a narrow perception just only what you are but anthropology is not just studying your physic it is studying your evolution so so to know what you are actually in later the scope of the subject is gradually increasing it is not just studying the evolutionary aspect how you have physically been evolved it has started studying you the physical expression is because of the genes inside you so genetics reveal that the way you are is because of genes the kind of physiology the kind of diseases uh, the, the kind of characters you are inheriting is because of genes so anthropology has borrowed uh, knowledge from genetics also so when the different dimensions of your study in terms of evolution physically in terms of uh, in terms of uh, your uh, genetics uh, etc physical anthropology gives a narrow perception to the subject that is the reason why after the second world war especially which is been raised by a washburn they have changed the name into biological anthropology which has which has given this discipline a, a broader perception to understand because with the evolution of the subject with the new discoveries and innovations the scope and the subject content of the subject has gradually increased the old name is not fitting into the kind of increasing in the scope of the subject led to change the name of physical anthropology to biological anthropology are you clear so the next part of uh, anthropology is uh, socio cultural anthropology socio cultural anthropology as i have discussed with you already so socio something means is which is related to society now you have come to know what is society and what is culture this comparative study holistic study evolution of culture in all the societies with all the institutions consists of socio cultural anthropology these are the main two branches of anthropology you have got in broader terms you have got other parts of other branches of anthropology known as linguistic anthropology and archaeological anthropology archaeology so this archaeological anthropology borrowed the knowledge of archaeology so what is archaeology why it became necessary for anthropology to borrow the knowledge from the discipline of archaeology and calling it as a branch of anthropology known as archaeological anthropology archaeology is the study of uh, past societies archaeology is the study of past societies anthropology is the study of human humanity human society human culture human evolution so in this process when you when you are revealing about yourself from archaeology what you are actually where there are no written proofs you need to acquire the knowledge from that discipline known as archaeology to, to know about you so that is the reason why you have made a branch known as archaeological anthropology <clears throat> so when archaeology is studying about the past human societies what history studies history also studies about past societies 
then my question is how can you differentiate between archaeology and history archaeology history doesn't require any evidence every discipline depends upon evidence every discipline without evidence a discipline or a subject can never be developed the fundamental difference is history studies about societies where they are literary proofs archaeology studies about societies where there are no literary proofs study society on the basis of the evidence is available in terms of artifacts might be a stone tool like the lower paleolithic stone tool or a bow and arrow or coins or bones based upon this or some constructions like you have got indus valley civilization constructions like the great bath or the port or something else uh, evidences are available but there is no written the terracotta artifacts toys etc Uh, the double burial these are all evidences with this uh, <coughs> evidences we try to establish uh, the culture of uh, a society so because anthropology is the study of humanity because archaeology is providing you certain knowledge uh, to know about you that particular knowledge of archaeology which reveals about you in pre literate societies became part of anthropology known as archaeological anthropology so other branch of anthropology is archaeological anthropology next uh, major branch of anthropology is linguistic anthropology linguistic linguistic means something related to language language played a very major role in terms of culture because without language can you convey an idea to your friend or family or member of a society can you convey the idea you cannot because culture is uh, pra- practiced on the basis of ideas ideas are exchanged on the basis of language so without language culture cannot evolve that is the reason why language played a major role in cultural evolution and this, this linguistic anthropology studies about the structure of the language evolution of language role of language in cultural evolution are you able to understand me role of language in cultural evolution so for example uh, the structure varies from uh, language to language the vocabulary structure the meaning the context varies from culture to culture for example take the word known as you so for example if your mother tongue is hindi or telugu or whatever it is is there any word like aap or meeru in english have you ever come across no while you are addressing whether he is an elder or a president or something else whoever it is in that language they address them as you there is no other substitute there but we have got uh, your language is highly evolved got my point so it so it reveals how the language behaves the structure language grammar how it is transmitting the culture how it is how the meaning varies from context to context and the role of language in culture will be part of linguistic anthropology these are the four main branches of anthropology so i think so to an extent you are able to understand what anthropology is their main branches after understanding this what anthropology is uh, we shall go through the syllabus been given by upsc and there are different dimensions for example if i ask you uh, because you have chosen anthropology as an option for example 
what you might have understood about anthropology so this so this subject uh, this is the this is the syllabus been given by upsc so you have got many different chapters all this syllabus been given by upsc need to be confined to certain subheadings of branches of anthropology then you will have a grip uh, uh, over the subject and you will have a zenith view what it is actually when you are not able to confine these into certain subdivisions you will be a, not a, you will not be able to know what it is actually and you will be in confusion for you now i am going to confine this into 7 to 8 uh, topics the whole syllabus so that those many number of chapter belongs to a part of anthropology so that uh, you will be able to know the dimensions of the subject got my point so see this archaeology so this this part of the paper one is concerned more about uh, the introduction of the subject to you this part constitutes introduction what anthropology is what its scope is for example in a broader perspective uh, in a gist i have explained you uh, the scope of anthropology meaning and scope just now i have given a small briefing to you it is introductory part to know what anthropology is so it has got certain relations similarities with certain uh, uh, subjects or social sciences like uh, behavioral science like psychology life sciences like biology zoology because you you are an animal we belong to animal kingdom so as an animal or doesn't this zoology doesn't studies about uh, vertebrates it studies about vertebrates so you belong to a, a class of uh, life known as uh, belong to animal kingdom in animal kingdom you belong to a class known as mammals in these mammals you belong to primates this is part of zoology actually a part of zoology so there is something relationship between anthropology and life sciences so how they are related this is how the explanation will be to introduce you what anthropology is so uh, just now i have discussed the introduction to you the branches so so what is social cultural anthropology i have introduced you what is social aspects what are cultural aspects why biological anthropology or physical anthropology is one and the same so archaeological anthropology linguistic anthropology uh, human evolution how you have been evolved uh, what is organic evolution just now i have explained you what is meant by evolution there are many theories of organic evolution uh, a very simple thing what darwin said how evolution has happened he has given certain examples quoting certain giraffe etc which you have read in your lower classes it's a very simple theories already you have read them just we will be organizing them as we require so uh, till 1.3 from 1.1 to 1.3 it introduces you the subject what it is actual just now i have done what uh, about elaboration of these topics so this constitute introduction of the subject next part cons constitutes of uh, uh, human evolution emergence this part is concerned about evolution so the paper on the same thing uh, to make you more clear which part constitutes to introduction these are the parts of the subject of the syllabus introducing you the subject how it is what it is how it is related to other disciplines so now all these Uh, sub units of this chapter are part of introduction next uh, branches of anthropology social cultural anthropology biological anthropology archaeological anthropology and linguistic anthropology it studies about the main branches of anthropology next part uh, 1.4 1.5 1.6 
studies about evolution physical evolution so no, now you have come to know the dimensions note it down the dimensions introduction so when you are able to keep this in box separately you will be able to know all the dimensions well, what are the one is introduction about the subject next is branches of anthropology branches of anthropology next is evolutionary part now you know what evolution is gradually you have been transformed from a monkey to australopithecus to homo sapiens how you have gradually been transformed we is the study about this which is known as evolutionary human evolution a different dimension so in this case uh, theories of organic evolution synthetic theory there are different theories how it has you might which you have read in your lower classes regarding lamarckism darwinism etc are simple theories which you have read uh, next characteristics of primates so prime means first so the what are the first animals from which we have been evolved the primates uh, we are also part of primates i have told you about monkeys prosimians simians means monkeys animals from before monkeys monkeys great apes and human beings uh, great apes means gorilla chimpanzee gibbon etc uh, so this is about uh, primates now you know what primates are so very simple thing where they are existing uh, where they are, they are not distributed throughout the world so except human being we are distributed everywhere we are part of primates but but rest of the primates like great apes take the case of chimpanzee and gorilla are confined to only certain pockets of africa orangutan is confined only to southeast asian region like indonesia malaysian regions right so you have got monkeys like old world monkeys and new world monkeys so what is old world and new world so who discovered america columbus the world which is not known till the discovery of columbus is known as the new world the new world consists of north america and south america world world consists of africa europe asia and australia and southeast asian countries constitutes world world so they say that how the world world monkeys and the new world monkeys what are the differences so this this is how study of primatology goes on uh next uh, the phylogenetic status phylogenetic status means uh, uh, phylogeny means uh, in the evolutionary history what is your position in the classification of uh, in the classification of life life has been classified into plants animals and microbes right so in this classification of life uh, uh, you have got uh, microbes been classified into how are microbes like for example life is been classified into eukaryotes and prokaryotes you carry out are advanced organisms with well developed uh, cell cell structure especially well defined nucleus where are certain organisms known as prokaryotes where they are not well developed organisms they do not have well defined nuclear structure classic example is bacteria classic example is bacteria so in this classification of life what is your position so life is been classified into plant kingdom and animal kingdom animal kingdom is classified into invertebrates and vertebrates in vertebrates you have been classified as mammals and you have been given the position of mammals in into mammals are subdivided into primates primates and you as you have been given as homo sapien so in this classification you phylogenetic status means phylogenetic status means so 
so you have a position for example life is being divided a simple division plant kingdom into life into plant kingdom and and animal kingdom animal kingdom is further divided into vertebrates and invertebrates invertebrates means what animals having backbone animals which doesn't have backbone so you are being given status in vertebrates vertebrates are further classified into fishes amphibians reptiles birds and mammals in mammals you have been given status as primates in primates you are homo sapiens this is your position that is what uh, phylogenetic status is every living being has a status in phylogen in the process of classification so this is a rough sketch i am giving to you while the notes which provide to you will be much more uh, a detailed one so where you will not get any errors even for example uh, the aspects which i am going to giving to you will be of a much more higher standard than peanut so uh, so now you might have understood what is meant by phylogenetic status this is as simple as this but in a detailed way i will be giving to you so characteristics of primates phylogenetic status of uh, uh, of different primates primates are further been divided for our study into fossil primates and living primates so now you know what primates are got my point so primates have got a unique characteristic features where you have got a uh, five fingers pan known as pentadactyl so you have got binocular eyes you have nails there are many other mammals a buffalo is a mammal does buffalo has got five fingers hands no it has got hooves and horns it is also a mammal but we don't have a hoof and a horn so based on certain characteristic features of having fingers having a foot with a binocular vision with a unique kind of nervous system which you have got the brain the size of the brain bipedal nature erect posture there are certain characters to call you a primate so uh, so in this phylogenetic status the status of different species they are been classified into fossil primates and living primates living primates means which are living we are living great apes are living chimpanzee gorilla gibbon orangutan monkeys they are living those are known as living primates fossil primates means which are extinct the evidences are available only through fossils australopithecus homo habilis homo erectus neanderthal cromagnon these are all fossil primates which are our predecessors those also have got a status in phylogeny in this process of giving positions in this evolutionary tree of phylogeny you will be able to know how far a species is relative and distant are you able to understand me the purpose of phylogeny in this tree which i have shown to you so which i have shown to you in this process what you are able to know here what you are able to know here is in the division of plant kingdom and animal kingdom 
Animal kingdom is further divided into vertebrates and invertebrates. In the case of vertebrates, you are, have been classified into mammals. An invertebrate like an earthworm is also an animal. Whether earthworm is close relative to you or a chimpanzee is close relative to you. Chimpanzee is close relative to you. So whether an earthworm is close relative to you as an or an uh, algae, uh, known as uh, algae in plant kingdom is close relative to you. Is earthworm is a close relative to you or algae is close relative to you? Earthworm, because it belongs to animal kingdom. So it is able to establish the degree of relationship uh, between different uh, organisms. This phylogenetic status gives you a degree of relationship. In this context, the degree of relationship has been established in terms of these uh, fossil primates and living primates because we are confined to anthropology. Got my point? So, this is how it has derived its knowledge from biology, especially a branch of biology known as zoology. So, this, con this constitutes theories of organic evolution, characteristics of primates, phylogenetic status constitutes evolution, part of anthropology. So, a different dimension you have come to know and what it is actually, I think so I have made to, to know the meaning basically what it is. Next is cell biology, is also a different dimension in our syllabus. So why it became necessary for you to study about cell biology because what are you made up of? You are made up of a combination of many number of trillions of cells. So the changes happening in the cells are responsible for the changes happening in you. When you are born you are just two kgs. Now you have acquired some mass more than 60, 70 or 80 kgs. So from where you have acquired this? How these cells are changing? What are they being subjected to? A process known as cell division led to the multiplication of cells. So because of this reason, because you are made up of cells, we need to know what cell is, what cell structure is, how cell is transforming, responsible for growth and development. Responsible for growth and development. You have not only acquired just mass. You have acquired certain qualitative feature. Just acquiring mass is growth. Acquiring qualitative factors is both. Uh, development is both acquiring quantity and quality. So, no, not just acquiring mass. You have acquired certain qualitative characteristic features. What are those quality characters you have acquired to call you developed? You are rational. You are intelligent. You have technology. You can reproduce. Once upon a time when you are young, you don't have the capacity to reproduce. Now you can. Rep reproduction is a qualitative function. Logical thinking is a qualitative function. Acquiring technology is a qualitative function. Organizing into institutions in the society is a qualitative function. So, this growth and development is because of the changes happening in the cell division and development. Because cells have two, ca two capacities. Replenishing capacities and differentiation capacity. Replenishing means uh, creating their copies through cell division and differentiation means one cell can convert into a different structure of the cell when you have got life on this earth you are just made up of a single cell known as egg but now you from the same cell single cell there are neurons in your brains there are neurons in your brain a cardiac tissue in your heart osteocytes in your bones are they similar but the source is the same. So because you, you are the resultant of this phenomena happening, we need to study what it is. Because you are the resultant of these cells. So now you know the other part of anthropology known as cell biology is a dimension. These, see, these main headings keep them in the box. You will be able to know a complete understanding of uh, what are the dimensions of the subject we are about to deal.
a different dimension known as archaeology. I need not elaborate again. I have already explained you while explaining you the scope of uh, anthropology, right? I have elaborated what uh, archaeology. So, uh, archaeology is a different dimension. So, in this process, certain evidences like pottery is available. With this, they are able to establish the technology they have got. They are excavating a site. They are able to find an auditorium in Turkey. So, as people having a level of auditorium means, what can you build up? What can, what can you understand? Means there is a very good social cohesion. It might be a game or a play or a function or a ritual. Might be. Means there is a huge social cohesion and people are sitting together, uh, etc. So, this studies about uh, uh, archaeology, studies Paleolithic, Mesolithic, Neolithic based upon the time duration. You have classified the time duration of the past society into these variants. How do they vary from time to time will be part of archaeology on the basis of evidences specifying the location in, a, in the world, whether it is in Africa or Europe or America or in India. That's it. Next dimension you have come to know. The other dimension is culture and society. Culture and society. It studies about culture and it studies about society. In this context, a great elaboration will be given regarding what culture is. Just I have defined you to make you understand what culture is uh, and society is. So, how these culture and society Society is made up of institutions. How this culture and institutions vary from society to society is part of this anthropology known as culture and society. So this is a this is a society and this is a culture. This is a group of people. Are we similar to them? Their festivals, culture, attire, language. In the same way, every society varies from region to region. That is part of studying human beings, society and culture is anthropology. In this, it studies the structure of society varying from uh, society to society in a monarchy, kings and noble people, how the strata varies. Slaves are being given the lower status. Kings and nobles are being given the higher status. After the kings, priests are being given. After the priests, scribes are being given. Scribes are people those days where who translate the last texts and, and write into documents kind of things. So craftsmen, peasants, so this is the structure of the institutions in a certain society which will not be the same, which varies from Indian society to other societies. Next is social institutions. Social institutions. So now you have come to know what an institution is. So these are the different institutions with which a society is made up of. So as I have told you, anthropology is holistic. It studies holistic means it studies all the societies at all the places at all time. Time in terms of temporal at all the places. So how this institution of marriage is in India, in America and in Africa, everywhere else. What is this institution known as marriage? How it varies. The same way family, kinship. Kinship is uh, the way the social relations are being established. Kinship studies about relationships which are consanguinal and affinal. Consanguinal relations are relations which you have acquired through blood. The relatives of your father towards your father, the relatives towards your mother or consanguinal relations means they are related to you through blood yes sir they are blood related to you 
but after a couple of years or some not maybe exactly after a couple of years after some time you will also establish a web of relations not through blood but through affinal affinal relations or relations you acquire through marriage all the relatives of your spouse in future will be your kin which are not linked through blood are known as affinal so kinship is a kind of social relations you establish in the society in terms of consanguinal and affinal relations so the way you address the relatives in your culture and the other cultures are not the same it varies how it varies is known as kinship so the family the family structure how it varies from society to society what is a nuclear family what is a joint family what is a polygamous family what is a polyandrous family so as we assume the structure of family with the father mother and children is this the structure everywhere else in the world there are certain variations what are those variations are part of this study of these different institutions economic organizations we have got an economy economic organization studies about production distribution and consumption of goods and services that is what economy is does the production distribution and consumption of goods and services happen in the same way throughout the world in a society the production of goods might be fish in a society the production of go goods might be cereals in a society the production of goods might be computers in a society a production of goods might be missiles or fifth generation war flights but it is production of goods essential so there are economies at primary level a secondary level and tertiary level of distribution production etc where varies from society to society how this uh, but a region has certain goods and services uh, the other region has got certain goods and services where they may not be self sufficient in this process to fulfill your requirements it has led to trade but in the initial stage of society formation known as band there is no trade they are just nomads they are just self sufficient with the resources available in the environment they are living but gradually it has led to a barter system trade export import wto there is a huge transformation transformation uh, in terms of economic organizations where this production distribution and consumption of goods and services vary from society to society varying at different levels of evolution of economies economies are also resultant of evolution from primitive to the existing civilized economies so uh, you might have understood uh, the evolution of economic economies means so in, in the same way the political organizations so for example you have studied economy in general studies you have studied polity in general studies how come the economy in general studies and polity in general studies different from economy in anthropology and polity in anthropology if you are able to make this difference you will be able to know this in economy you study the production consumption and distribution of goods and services in a state and in a civilized state in a state you have a government elected by the people not been impacted much by the culture it is you can uniquely demarcate with a watertight compartment about uh, uh, the demarcation of economic organization in a civilized state this constitute economic organization consisting of the uh, central bank of a country like reserve bank of india or the finance minister or the production distribution systems but in the traditional societies you can't demarcate it there is economic institution but you can't demarcate it because all the institutions are highly intertwined with socio cultural aspects the chief of a tribe decides how the goods need to be distributed how a festival need to be celebrated 
He is the legislature, executive, judiciary, economic, political activities are being confined to a single chief of a tribe. But for us, the economic organization is different, political organization is different. But these existing institutions are the resultant from the evolution of incipient economies and institutions. We have not been, the existing institutions have not been created as it is. The existing institutions are the resultant of these incipient institutions which are intertwined, which are not demarcated, where we cannot differentiate, but they are enmeshed in socio-cultural institutions. Got my point? So how this has happened, how this evolution has happened will be part of economic and political organizations. So, so there is uh, the, the evolution of these economies and political organizations has been studied here and about the religion, the religion existing now, the religion existing in the past societies, what is that religion known as, how it has been evolved. So this is about social institutions is another dimension. Another dimension is thought or perspectives or thought, anthropological theories it is being given as anthropological theories, uh, the dimension has been described as thought. So this is an important chapter, every paper contains a question from this chapter. Without uh, a question from thought you will not find a uh, question paper. So thought is uh, an idea of uh, anthropological thinkers. So these are the uh, thinkers or anthropologists who are responsible for the development of the subject. These people are responsible for the development of the subject and they gave their own theories and they gave their own theories. So here in this case of these theories, they, theory means, what do you mean by theory? An idea. Theory means an idea had to be proved is theory. So, they explain about society and culture, how they have been formed. So, for example, uh, classical evolutionism. Now, I have explained you what is meant by evolution. So, there are different schools of thought. For example, uh, evolutionary anthropologists, diffusionists, for example. There are two different variants. Evolutionary anthropologists say that culture is the resultant of evolution in a unilinear manner. Unilinear means a single line. So, for example, a culture according to us as you have read, uh, the Paleolithic, Mesolithic, Neolithic is a sequence, is a unilinear sequence. They say that every society passes through these stages. Is, a unilinear, is an idea. Is there any complex in this to understand? Have you understood this? If you have understood this single idea, you will be able to understand the whole chapter. This is the ideas of different thinkers of anthropology. And these people who explain how culture has been evolved in a sequence are known as classical evolutionists. Classical evolution. Diffusionism means, they say that culture evolves from a cultural major centers and that cultural element diffuses from one place to another place and the rest of the societies follow an innovation of a culture happened at a place. Need they, a, a, every society need not pass through the same stages. But evolutionary, classical evolutionists say that Every society has to pass through the same sequence, sequential stages of cultural evolution. So some accept this, some negate this. They give some examples of different societies elsewhere which have bypassed certain stages. This is how the chapter goes on. Have you understood this? So, hello, have you understood this? So, <coughs> so this is how uh, a different, op these are nothing but the opinions of uh, different uh, <coughs> thinkers of anthropology. For example, a school of thought known as structuralism and functionalism. A structure has got a function. 
For example, family is a structure. What is the function of family? They take care about you, they educate you, they protect you, and family is responsible for procreation. Means it is creating members essential for society. Family provides you resource for your survival is an economic function. So there is an economic function, a reproductive function, security function, socialization function. So will any other institute reproduce people apart from family? No. So a structure in a society known as family has got a function. A structure known as political organization has a function which is known as structuralism. The function of political organization is to make laws. A family as a structure cannot make a law. Political organization as a structure, can it reproduce? No. There are many structures as institutions. Every structure has got a function, which is known as functionalism. This is as simple as this. So, uh, we'll be discussing this uh, uh, topic by topic and a very simple aspect and you will be provided with material and explanation and practice session got the point so in this case of preparation there are certain stages we guide you in a holistic manner where you will be provided classes you will be provided material you will be made to attend uh, practice sessions, test series. I will be able to identify you a specific problem you have got. Because the problem you have got and the problem you have got will not be the same. I can identify the specific problem in you and I can rectify and give a solution to that. Because the solution to your problem is different, the solution to your problem is different. Unless until you follow all these stages. If you are able to follow all these stages, this is equivalent to an SSC examination, which you can do. And the advantage you have got this here is, this is not a complex subject where uh, a rocket science is essential to make a launch to or a voyage to Mars. Simple thing, your, your consciousness, your attention will be sufficient enough for me to make you understand things. And your discipline in terms of attending all the test series, etc., further strengthens you. One point which I like to emphasize is before making you to attend the test series, I will make you to practice single questions. Because at this stage of maturity and experience, you will not be able to write a complete test series paper. Because you will not have the experience, knowledge, or the content in the brain. So you will be hesitating to write the examination and you will not attempt the test series. And your resource and time will be waste. But in the session, when the session is going on, what I do is, after completing a chapter, for example, we have subdivided this. After completing a unit known as introduction part, I will give you a couple of questions. You are supposed to answer. With the source, copy them. The intention for making you to practice is know how to write it. Got my point? So, later there are certain aspects which you need to acquire, skill sets. How to write it, how to organize the questions, maintain the structure of the question. Second is word limit, time limit are different skill sets which will not be acquired in a single instance. These are different skill sets. You need to independently practice to acquire that skill. In the first step, to know how to write the structure of an answer to a specific question structure, it may consume three, four, five hours for a single question in the initial times. Because the main aim there is not to maintain time or not to maintain word limit. What to write? Then comes the next stages of uh, maintaining time or word limit or etc etc when this kind of practice is being done for paper one and paper two automatically without your knowledge you will acquire the skill set 
that I am going to do here, you are going to follow that. I will not confine my guidance to the classroom session. We here in the institute, after the session or before the session or on a day which we specify, sit here, practice, scrutinize, correct it or you can write it and give it to me in your, at your home and I will set it right things if there are any defects existing. Whatever may be your level of intellect, forget about that. Whatever may be your background of education, forget about that. Uh, paying attention, just following the program will be sufficient enough to acquire basic essential marks. If you are able to follow the program completely in the classroom session and practice session, acquiring 300 plus is not an issue. So, and, and there are other advantages with anthropology. The other advantages are, for example, uh, you have a written the thought point, right? We will be continuing this. The other advantages are, for example, this is the syllabus, right? In the case of the syllabus, uh, we have got paper 2. We, we have got paper 2. Paper 1 carries 250 marks. Paper 2 carries 250 marks. But you don't feel the weight of paper 2 at all. Because you know already what it is. Every one of you know this. If you are committed for 10 days, just 10 days, you will not only know what it is the subject content, you will be at the level of writing answers for mains. As simple as that, that is. So, we have got the material specially for you and you can easily go through that and uh, after that. So, for example, paper 2, you have already read this in history. Again, we are doing this in paper 1. So, already fundamentals are known, but paper 2 is more concentrated on Indian anthropology. So, the dimensions which I have discussed, uh, what anthropology is, uh, socio-cultural anthropology or physical anthropology or linguistic anthropology or whatever it is, uh, because we are in India, paper 2 is exclusively allocated to Indian aspects. Indian aspects. And for example, uh, see this Harappa, uh, Indus Valley Civilization, you might have read in history already. Uh, Ethno-archaeology. Ethnic and linguistic elements in Indian population distribution in uh, different uh, ethnic and linguistic elements means you have got different religions. Yeah, the Hindus or the Muslims or the Christians, the population distribution, etc., etc. Uh, so, Varnashrama, Purushadas, you might have heard of Brahmacharya Ashram or Gruhastha Ashram or Vanaprastha or Sanyasa Ashram, which you might have heard about this. These are very simple things where uh, to be, uh, to be uh, uh, specific, uh, you need not require uh, even classroom session also. Of course, I will be taking this. Practice and material will be enough to tackle this. Because caste system, where you know India has got caste system, the Brahmins, Kshetriyas, Vaishyas and Sudras. You have got this kind of caste system hierarchy. One is given social higher status, the other is being given lower social status. Why it is, how it is. It is a very simple thing to understand. Who, what a dominant caste. In a region, uh, there might be a dominant caste. In a region, Patels might be dominant. In a region, Reddies might be dominant. In a region, Kamas might be dominant. Somewhere else in uh, Rajasthan or somewhere else, some other caste is dominant. So, Jats, for example, might be a dominant community in the northwestern region. So, that is what is known as dominant caste. Everything is known to you. A Jajmani system, a landlord. Got my point? So, who has got a landlord to whom many uh, services are being provided by different communities? A carpenter provides the plows. So, make the bullock carts or the dobi, etc., are in relation with the uh, landlord. In return, the landlord pays to them not in terms of uh, cash, 
the landlord pays him in terms of uh, kind in terms of the agricultural produce being acquired in an year in an year the once in an year he is going to provide the a certain amount of bags of rice or something else to the service to the other caste service providing caste so how this dynamics of relationship exist between the ja, uh, judgeman and the kamin or the service provider is the judgeman system the caste system a dominant caste so caste mobility caste mobility is or, or there is another concept known as sanskritization which will be discussed with you for example the brahmins have been given a higher social status brahmin kshatriyas vaishyas and shudras but these days who is been given higher social status whoever acquires an authoritative position irrespective of the caste whoever acquires accumulates wealth irrespective of the caste are been given higher social status is so uh, trying to acquire climbing to the higher social status is it not a caste mobility following the practices following the practices of higher social communities Uh, the uh, the lower social status is been uh, from the lower social status they are going to acquire higher social status is it not a mobility of caste so the very simple uh, aspects sacred complexes for example uh, you have got certain religious regions kashi for example tirupati for example or sacred complexes so uh, elaboration of that will be very simple thing so what i like to tell you is buddhism jainism islam christianity how it is existing in our country so paper 2 just paying some attention uh, the reason why people select anthropology because paper 2 is not at all a problem to you but in certain options for example psir or geography or some other options public ad you will not be able to understand sometimes the questions but this is not the case here you don't have the stress at all for paper 2 uh, so that is one of the secrets of success because of choosing anthropology paper 2 is very simple so apart from this you have got certain other advantages in choosing uh, anthropology the other advantages are you auto in general studies you have got indian society you will be able to do indian society better because this is completely indian society next uh, you have got case studies in ethics i think so you will be able to do case case studies well because this is an area which studies about indian society indian rural society in general and tribal societies so it is it in, we need to deal about different incidences kind of uh, conditions these people face in the rural region and in the tribal region automatically you will be able to write better way the case studies in ethics and you have got an essay paper you will be able to do social essays better because of this paper too so there is an indirect impact on other areas where the stress load is being decreased in paper 2 and you the weightage is the same and it is having a cumulative impact on essay ethics and social issues regarding society because anthropology is completely related to society so that is the main advantage with anthropology Uh, this is an uh, this is one of the main reasons which you have got an advantage are you able to understand me so this is what uh, thought is next is uh, culture and language uh, already i have explained you the impact of culture and language 
linguistic anthropology which we have studied the role of language in terms of culture the structure of language which varies from society to society to society is a dimension next uh, dimension is research methodology so anthropology is very unique because it has got an approach to study society and culture with the research methodology and a very unique kind of research methodology it has got field study participant approach people be in the field and study how the society structure institutions how they are evolving and they compare different institutions from place to place how this phenomenon of research happens i think so some of you might have definitely had got these chapters known as research methodology somewhere else in your graduation the same area but an anthropological perception a questionnaire how it varies how is it different from re research through questionnaire is completely different from research through participant observation in participant observation you will be part of the society living with them not having any kind of gadgets with you cell phones recording etc papers pen etc you just move with them do certain activities with them as usual when because you must not make conscious you must not make the people conscious when you are able to make the people conscious they will not be in their natural setup when they are not in their natural setup you will not get the fact so you mu you must try to behave as natural as possible you must try to behave as a member of society when you are a stranger when you have been to a society to study can they be natural no they become conscious looking at you observing you who you are so as a participant observer for them to be subconscious you need to spend certain duration living with them the first day they will be more conscious the second day third day fourth day fifth day what happens they consider you as one of them then you will they will you will be able to get the facts so which is known as participant observation is one of the major method of research methodology uniqueness we have got in anthropology to study institutions culture cultural variation because culture is behavior culture is also a behavioral pattern so that is how the research methodology goes on uh participating with them living with them you will be able to know so which is known as research methodology through different methods questionnaire may not you will be able to get certain data but may not be as accurate as a, a participant observation so got my point this is a dimension research methodology next part is genetics genetics from 9.1 to 9.4 constitutes genetics human genetics mendelian genetics so what is meant by genetics genetics is the study of genes and chromosomes in this process of study and understanding these how the characters are been inherited from generation to generation so for, for example you have acquired certain characters how you have acquired these characters you have acquired these characters from your parents through genes and chromosomes so how, so you are born to your parents and your br brother and sister are born to your, your the same parents are you looking alike you must look alike because you are born to the same parents why there is difference all the grandchildren acquire all the characters of the grandparents some are missing disappear some characters which you have got might be from your great grandparent where you your parents might not be having these characters so why a character of of a great grandparent is missing in a parent but expressing in a grandson yes so how this phenomena happens why a disease been expressed only in an individual why a disease is not expressed in other grandson or granddaughter so the inheritance patterns of different characters diseases how it vary what are the characters how the genes express their characters are major part of 
genetics genetic studies about genes and how these characters are inherited from generation to generation it studies these are uh, this is a dna this is the structure of dna dna is made up of a, a molecules known as nucleic acids known as cytosine guanine adenine and thymine these are nothing but uh, these are nothing but certain molecules combined to form uh, forming bonds like nitrogen hydrogen carbon when the these molecules combine to form we call it as dna a sequence of this is known as a gene many genes combine to form a chromosome the complete number of chromosomes in a species is known as genome is known as genome these are responsible for your characters these are varying because of and different reasons these are varying because because you don't get the genes completely from your mother or completely from your father 50 percent is from your mother 50 percent is from your father so they are not complete they are being shared obviously you will not be the same you will be varying so how this variation happens how recombination happens in these genes the way the crossing over varies the crossing over even though the genome is the same the crossing over is not the same that is the reason why crossing over is the way the chromosomes exchange the genes which i will elaborate in cell division the way the crossing over is not the same even though the genome is the same because of which variations exist between siblings siblings are children born to the same parents the reason for variation is variation in crossing over a stage in cell division so this is how genetics goes on am i clear what am i discussing with you so these four chapters 9.1 to 9.4 So the different genes they study for example in genetics uh, there is a, a problem known as trisomy 21 tri means three trisomy means actually you must have two chromosomes but you have an additional chromosome in 21 uh, uh, which is leading to a problem known as trisomy 21 known as also known as mongoloid EDS so people uh, children suffer with this kind of condition where they look like a mongolian low set ears the shape of the ears are different uh, decreased muzzle tone the muzzle tone is less small physical size the size is less cleft feet the feet are cleft bent and they cannot survive in general sometimes they die by the, the time they acquire the age of 13 is a problem to humanity how anthropology gives a solution there is a solution known as genetic screening so this is what screening is they screen your genome when the genome is being screened when trisomy is being found what happens is this screening is done in general in a pregnancy around second or third month less than third month with the technique extracting certain amniotic fluids so they will, when they are able to find they will counsel the couple not to go ahead go for an abortion so that you are not going to suffer to bear the child and the child is not suffering is it not a, an advice saving you sometimes they can screen you in advance of a pregnancy screening the chromosomes so that they can counsel you accordingly they can suggest you to go ha go ahead to have children or not to have children even some problems can be treated with medication and treatment some problems cannot be treated so they will suggest a couple not to have when they cannot be treated and they are going to suggest a couple to have when they can be treated is a genetic counseling of part of genetics this counseling uh, is not existing in uh, genetics as a separate discipline but in anthropology it not just studies physically what genetics is it's it applies to the social and cultural aspects of counseling phenomena and it 
keeps you safe so that is how genetics in general genetics in anthropology is different and you will be able to learn better when i elaborate the chapters okay so um, from monday onwards we will be starting genetics uh, first i will be starting after introducing you the subject uh, i will be starting genetics so so this different disadvert syndrome why it happens it is trisomy 13 it is uh, uh, you we have got 23 pairs of chromosomes 46 so in this uh, there is something abnormality there is something extra is responsible for a problem there might be even a deletion too in a case may also lead to a disease some examples which i have given to you next chapter is race next area is race and racism how many you now you have come across how many areas from introduction to so these are different dimensions right so race studies about uh, race and racism so how is race different from racism race is a kind of classification of humanity on the basis of certain physical characteristic features on the basis of the color of the skin or the texture of the hair shape of the face nose etc are the parameters being considered to classify a race into for example a caucasoid race or a negroid race or australoid race or mongoloid race further they have been subclassified these are the major races so in in, the, in terms of study of humanity race led to a social phenomena known as racism racism is a kind of feeling where an individual is feeling a superior because of uh, certain physical characteristics he or her has got thinking that the physical characters he or she has got something superior and other features are inferior this phenomena of creating a superior or inferior feeling based upon the physical characteristic features is known as racism so for example a white man may feel that he has got certain superior characteristic features relatively compared to a black in africa led to racism in a country like america so this is how the chapter goes on very simple thing uh, this is the dimension next is applied anthropology 9.6 to 12 is applied anthropology so applied so what is the main aim of anthropology the main aim of anthropology is to give solutions to the human problems any problem you tell it you tell me you have got a solution if you are able to understand what the, what anthropology is by the end of this session you will be able to give solutions to every problem you have got every problem can you believe this can you believe me so you will definitely even though you don't believe at then you will be able to give any problems you will be able to give solutions to any problems at the end provided you must not miss any class that's a, a condition got my point so applied anthropology is uh, for example this is a kind of group like anganwani group or kind of thing where the problem there is there are disparities economically there are certain poor people who cannot afford to buy a nutritive food because of which they suffer with nutritive deficiency diseases if a pregnant woman doesn't have a nut balanced diet can the embryo growing in her womb can be healthy no so anthropologists apply their knowledge identify a certain food food which is so cheap and highly nutritive where a, where a lower class can lower economic class can also afford 
will give a solution. Apart from this, they will be supported by NGOs, non-governmental organizations and governmental programs will lead to give a solution to different problems. And the child born will not suffer with any nutritive deficiency diseases. Is it not a, an application to a problem? So, in the upcoming discussion, you, you will be able to solve all your problems, you know, in the process of this session, both the physical, psychological, uh, social, everything. Applied Anthropology is an application. There is a branch of anthropology known as ergonomics. Is an application. Ergonomics is a kind of uh, um, science in anthropology where, especially in sports, there are certain different kinds of problems you have got. They will be able to define certain gaskets and they will be able to guide that to your physique. A sport is best. For example, a person who is a tall person, the sport they suggest is might be a basketball. But for a person like Tendulkar, cricket might be suitable, but not bowling, but batting. So that he will be able to excel. Such kind of guidance will be given. In the case of kind of uh, uh, troubles you, are, you have got in terms of your body, your body is aching because the way you are working is wrong. But when the position changes, the suffering can be decreased because of the kind of gasket. For example, when a person is not taught how to sit to avoid back pain, he suffers it. But when a person is taught to sit in a right manner, with the right dimensions of the chair essential, with a particular shape, he will not suffer with. So for example, uh, recently I have gone in a car, uh, a bench car from uh, Hyderabad to Vijayawada and I have been in a different car in a Maruti car. The stress levels I have felt uh, while I am travelling in a bench, uh, I don't feel as if I am travelling, I am not stressed, I am as usual into my activity. But when I am travelling in a different car, it became necessary for me to take a rest for about a couple of hours to get into my activity. Means there is certain kind of posture, gasket systems. Uh, which can be suggested to the people to excel in their career and to avoid problems. To avoid certain problems is ergonomics. So, nutritive anthropology, forensic anthropology. Forensic anthropology with the help of physical evidences like biological evidences and other physical material evidences with the help of some footprints, blood, semen, hair follicles they will be able to establish the fact regarding a crime being happened in the process of investigation is a is an application of for example footprints is it not study of human human beings blood samples genes pcr tests etc uh, related to this forensic anthropology so this is what applied anthropology is for example Growth and development, for example. This is what forensic anthropology just now I have discussed with you. Anthropology of sports, nutrition. So, relevance of menarche and menopause. So, in the case of menarche and menopause, what kind of problems uh, uh, people suffer with? So, for example, in the menstrual cycle, for example, in the case of menopause, for example, at a stage where woman stops her menstrual cycle because of change in the hormonal proportion in your body. When you are not aware of these issues, how to manage, there will be a mental and physical disturbances which may disturb you, your health and which may disturb your family. To experience this transition, to avoid this conflict and pain, what are the reasons, what are the precautionary measures? Taken can be discussed effectively here to give a solution to this problem. So, uh, so this is highly applied, right? Are, are you able to understand me? The kind of sports, gaskets, forensic anthropology, growth and development, uh, aging and senescence. In the process of this aging, we experience many kind of problems. The performance of the body physiology, etc. is highly been affected. So what are the reasons how to overcome this concept of human growth and 
development how you are born how you have been developed uh, what is the difference between growth and development i have already discussed with you reasons for this how the cell is responsible for this how maturity adolescence childhood infantry and uh, maturity senescence how this uh, prenatal postnatal before birth after birth how the changes happen what are the problems uh, epidemiological anthropology means different kinds of diseases what are the different kinds of diseases we are being subjected to there are certain contagious diseases there are certain physiological diseases there are such certain genetical diseases which are not contagious how they happen how it happens what are the measures need to be taken there is the reason why all these areas together been considered as applied anthropology which gives you the solution for different problems we face next part is uh, paper 2 paper 2 after the discussion been made with you we can broadly divide this into the evolution of indian culture we have we have studied culture in paper 1 in paper 1 the evolution of culture is been read in terms of uh, the whole world but in the case of uh, in the case of paper 2 the evolution of indian culture is been studied the same way the paleolithic mesolithic and neolithic confined to india and we study indian society and tribal society indian society for example to differentiate here the rural society is something different from the tribal society tribes in general are considered as the primitive people in our language what do you call the mass in your language tribes as telugu chami kandariki huh okay you don't religion girijana yes girijana so but i say that adivasis have you ever heard this word known as adivasi a synonym word to girijan so in north india generally they use the word adivasis in south india we call it as girijan giri mean giri means konda so people who live in mountains it doesn't mean that all of them live in mountains they even live in plains also adi means the first the first people adivasis why they are called as the first people because as man of course women also has originated in africa he has started migrating from africa to europe to asia in this process of migration to form the population in uh, india it has led to many number of episodes of migration it has led to many number of episodes of migration the first episode of migration which has entered into india are considered as the first people in these different episodes of migration one after the another because of the conflict be, be of space resource etc certain section of people try to move away from one another led to living into the interior jungle regions are known as tribes they have got different uh, unique culture religion language which are different from the general population of the country so this episodes of migration has led to even the last episode of migration which you know the colonial era before that the muslim invasion so there are many number of invasions uh, led to the accumulation of uh, indian population this difference you are able you, you will be able to find when you are able to observe the population from from sri lanka or from tamil nadu kerala when you gradually move you will be able to observe certain differences in the people physically population in tamil nadu population in andhra pradesh telangana gujarat maharashtra jammu and kashmir rajasthan assam are they do they look alike are there any differences do they look alike the the differences is because the migration of episodes of population 
are not the same vary from episode of migration to episode of migration led to different variations but over a period of time india has been described as a melting pot right these different groups have got different cultures each culture each group will be having their own culture that is the reason why uh, the people who speak different language implies that they have been entered into this land at a different episode of migration but over a period of time with the internal migration many people north indian settle in hyderabad many people from hyderabad settle in delhi get married marry with different sections in this process what happens the difference in physical differences will be reduced why it is described as melting pot because this internal migration of different episodes of people uh mingle with one another marry and this is, when they marry what happens to the differences to the next generation decreases that is the reason why it is been described as melting pot because not only the physical reason not only leading to the decrease in the decreasing in the physical characteristic features in this process of marrying one another it is also because we try to practice the culture of other people for example in hyderabad people speak hindi people speak english people speak telugu kannada some marathi etc etc is been in the borders of maharashtra people speak uh, marathi so why do we speak some other language hindi etc here so in this process uh, everybody is able to understand telugu hindi english kind of things so what is happening to the cultural practices also being intermingled physically and culturally what are happening to the characteristic features mingling together that is the reason why it has been described as melting pot of cultures so i hope so you have understood to an extent what uh, anthropology is which deals with the uh, indian society in general with the caste system etc which i have discussed with you the impact of uh, industrialization westernization on this caste system and family and tribal society in general now you have come to know who are tribes to an extent these are the different uh, dimensions of uh, anthropology you need to add there indian society and tribal india the different dimensions indian cultural evolution indian society and tribal india and hope so you have understood the advantage of anthropology especially by knowing the nature of paper too you have got weightage only in terms of pressure only in terms of paper one so that is the reason why you can allocate this time limit and weight bearing nature pressure in gs so you will have an advantage in the total scores any questions no questions